Hi friends, how are you? This is the Colonel speaking, and welcome back to the Talos Principle. We just had a freeze up there. I don't know what happened. Uh, fortunately, we weren't doing anything. Anyway, we're back today. We got stumped by uh, the throne room puzzle here last episode. We're gonna try to beat it this time, and hopefully get through a couple others as we go. Um, so there's that fan, and there's the connector right here. Okay. And yes, we can't shut down this uh, fan. Right. Okay. Uh, can I do that? Will that shut it down? No. Okay. Uh, I, what I do remember being able to do is go through here and open that door does give us a cube, although that doesn't do a whole lot, it does give us um, something, I suppose, and unfortunately, obviously, we still can't go that way, uh, we can't jump up to get the star, and we can jump up this level, but we need a second cube to get to the top. So, that's still a bust as well. Uh, there's nothing else in this room, but we might need it. Maybe we can jump over a wall with the, the cube, I don't know. I think I did that when I was working off camera last episode to try to solve the puzzle. I think I did this. Yeah. But that gate was closed, so I had to reset. Um, I think that wall is impossible to jump because of the layout. Uh, you can't jump these, I know that. It doesn't work, it actually extends upward. So, we're in a little bit of a tough spot because uh, we can't open this stuff. Uh, one thing, interestingly enough, we can open that halfway anyway. Uh, is there anything else with the blue connector that we can open at this time? I mean, I don't see anything but it's worth a shot to at least check it out. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything that we could do with that. Unless, I mean, we could come over here and maybe open this up, but that still requires getting inside. Uh, so, no go there. Um, I mean, one thing, we could try to get the cube in here to block it, but I feel like we have to get this second connector to do anything. Uh, it's hooked up to this. So, I mean, if we could somehow see it, that would really, really help our cause. Um, I mean, one thing we can do, maybe, is go right here on the cube. That's something I didn't think of last episode. Now I'm kind of face palming because it might work. Uh, actually, I feel like I tried this. I'm pretty sure I tried this and it didn't work. But we're gonna go for it again because I don't remember for sure. Um, it's actually not gonna work anyway because we're not positioned properly, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, a, it is blocked by the top of that. Good to know. Uh, I don't think we can go up here either. I'm pretty sure we tried this and there was nothing we could do because we need the fan over here, really. Um, because we can't place up here, we can't drop the connector, so that's not going to work either. Uh, and we can't place anything like this, can we? No. Not allowed. There's nothing up here. No. Okay. Man. Uh, so what can I do? Not much, I suppose. Um. I can't, I can't get to that. I mean, I can jump in, but I won't have the connector, so I'll be stuck. Because, I mean, even if I jump in with the connector, and I think, oh, I just did it by accident. Um, yeah, it's telling me to reset. Yep, we're going to do that. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. So we're going to give this another shot, guys. I don't think there's anything in that room. I mean, 
I didn't see any way to get into that. Yeah, uh... This is gonna be one heck of a challenge, I have to say. Um... I mean, unless there is something over here that we just are missing. But I see... I mean, I see a lot back here, but I see absolutely no way to get inside. Uh, unless there's something outside? But no, there's no, there's no way. Okay. So, that's not gonna happen for us. And I'm just curious. This is the last puzzle for us to do in here. Alright, good to know. Yeah, there is, there is no way we can do that. I don't understand, honestly. Uh, I'm just kind of running around to see if there are any secrets in the level. Uh, just, just for fun while I try to figure this out. Um, oh, they still need that one device. Uh, oh, and that was the first talk of transcendence in the game, I think. I don't think that had been brought up, uh, until now. Although, of course, that's something that's, uh, very relevant to this whole idea. The idea of transcendence and becoming, uh, robots. There was a movie about that a while ago called, uh, uh none other than Transcendence. Um, so I am a little surprised we haven't gotten any reference to that until now. I'm not surprised we are getting references to that, though. So, uh, let's go in. I mean, can we grab this? No. And there's no way to link from there to there. Because we can't see it. I still can't block that laser, which is connected to a fixed connector. Oh, this is just great, isn't it? And this won't block it either because the height's off. Even sticking it on the cube probably won't work. I still don't think I have the height for it. No, because now it points down. So we have really an impossible situation then. Unless I take the red laser and like, shoot it there? I mean, would that work? Possibly? I doubt it. Um, I could try. It doesn't stop it. If I point it at everything blue... Although I don't seem to be able to connect both at the same time. Yeah, no, no good. Doesn't work. Um... Again, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. Uh, absolutely nothing. I mean, I could hook a blue connection up there, I guess. But I'd have to get inside without the, the red laser, which doesn't work. So, what am I doing here? I, I don't get it, still. Okay, uh, I guess we're coming back to this one, because I've now spent, I think, over 40 minutes total working on that puzzle. So we're going to go back to uh, the Land of Faith, and just, we're going to go into level 5 and start working on that one, I think. There are still 7 in this place, right? I think there are. Yeah, th there are 7, there are 7. So let's go to World 5. We're going to start working here because unfortunately we can't make any headway on level 4 there. Uh, so for the time being, we're locked out of that. We'll have to come back and do some cleanup, which is something we've done before. Many ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. Interesting, okay. So, I think this is the first time that we've heard Elohim actually uh, admit the fact that this is all a program. It's not, um... It's not real life. I mean, he, he hasn't said it's all fake, but of course, this is him saying it is a program, which we knew, but, um, uh, we, we didn't know it was a program, and the designers 
uh, both uh, over at Crow Team and in the fictional design team. Both of them have been giving us hints that uh, this is all a program, and we figured that out a long time ago. But uh, Elohim now has actually told us it is a program, and even that has some similarities to uh, uh, Genesis, Let There Be Light, uh, Initiate Program, uh, and if you're a more scientific person, the Big Bang. Uh, so there are parallels everywhere with um, this stuff. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else. We saw the second terminal, which we'll, we'll check out in a second. Um, I call it a terminal. Wow. Um, I've been playing too much Fallout 4. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go into this computer here. Uh, the archive. I guess you could call it an archive terminal. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Party on, dudes. <laughs> the land party at the end of the universe. Yo, know, I don't know if you folks noticed. But it's the end of the world. There's nothing we can do about it. So instead of sitting around crying, I mean, we have some fun before we come. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. It's land party time. Two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. There'll be noms, drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited. And you bring your friends, too. Especially if they're hot. See you in 3000 BC. Love, love. Progress Report 32. We've gotten to that irritating point where all the major stuff's in place, and all we have to deal with are a million little things. The main modules are all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. Uh, the process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work. But it's still crude as hell. Some of it's just surface stuff, like the random usernames. Some of it's more worrying. Various bugs, the fact that we're running extensive tests. We've got a lot of polishing to do. Uh, with the team down to half its original size, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. P.S. Alexandra, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is your baby. I'm going to need your input. Philosophy of tea. Last night I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several competent dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth, and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean, the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and these waves drown out everything else about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think, there's just pain and absolutely nothing else. It's like your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then, you go to the dentist, and, assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which make you go numb, then they drill a hole in you, cut the nerve, and snip snip, and it's over. Just like that, like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny little nerve, sending electrochemical signals into your brain, and this unimaginable pain which nearly blotted out your very consciousness and stopped at just a little cut. We should really call this the Toothos Principle, but that's incredibly stupid. <laughs> I like, um, I mean, I enjoyed seeing the various excerpts from different mythologies in pretty much new context, but I think I like hearing from, uh, the voices of the team much better. I think that's a lot more fun, honestly. Um, Anyway, it does raise an interesting, uh, before we start reading here, something that was interesting about what Elohim said that I just realized is, um, as we debate whether it makes more sense to climb the tower or walk through the gates of eternity, it is true that Elohim is running the program at this point. Um, like, there have been many iterations of AI, enough to believe, to make me believe that, um, you know, there's no one managing the program anymore but him. Uh, is, are his motives genuine? We've learned that mm, they're not really. Uh, it's more of self-preservation because he's a sentient being as well and he's discovered that um, the best chance for his survival is to keep all this testing going. Um, or at least that's, that's what we think right now. Uh, that's my working theory uh, based on what we heard in that weird like airbent room uh, in Land Faith World 2? 3? I don't remember which one. 
Uh, but it is true that if he is preserving this world, and this is the only world that there is, um, therefore, I mean, without Elohim, you can't continue to exist because the program is only so big and you can't go outside of it. It's not like um, the universe that's infinitely expanding. Um, by definition, something that's programmed is finite. Um, even if it's procedurally generated, it's bound by that, the terms of that procedural generation. And Elohim is controlling that, so we do have to consider his power uh, as we consider what the right uh, way to go is here. Anyway, let's hear um, Transcendence. Rita responses to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective material reality. I am also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. And yet I believe. I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion to me is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the earth is 6,000 years old or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a rejection of reason, but it's application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more uh, traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science and is not opposed to it. It's interest that's interesting. Because if we think about what the word transcendence actually means, it comes from that word transcend. Um, and uh, obviously, our view on what transcendence uh, refers to is a little bit skewed because, you know, as I've said, certainly for me, uh, my immediate thought is of that movie and of um, people transcending and becoming computers. But what it really means is just going beyond previous bounds, and uh, that that's an interesting take right there um, about transcendence, because um, religion does transcend those things. Uh, Alright, what, what was this called when I click on? Matter.txt. True, there are certain idealist books, um, not of a clerical character, but philosophical ones, where you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9 p.m. train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the trail of the departing train and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish this space, to overcome it, to economize time, to prolong human life, to register past time, uh, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject matter to man. Matter which constitutes the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Interesting. Uh, so, we're talking about the fact that fundamentally, um, the world is not just our perception, although um, once you're inside a program, that becomes a little bit warped. Because if you think about it, um, like the world unloads itself um, when you leave it, uh, especially if certain settings are turned on in a game or a program. And uh, when the world is unloaded, really, the, uh, the only thing that exists is what's immediately around you, uh, I suppose. So that's one thing that is different about this world, is that not all of it is actually um, simultaneously in existence, uh, which is something interesting to think about, I think. Um, you know, that as close as this uh, simulation is to actual life, it's still quite far away. In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe That Doesn't Fall Apart Two Days Later, Philip K. Dick discusses the two themes that are most central to his work. What is reality, and what is an authentic human being? You know, authentic person is a better term as we've learned throughout this game. 
Anyway, his speculations and experiences will seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work, yet despite what may seem like far-fetched ideas, somehow the world of the Bible is a literally real but veiled landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to us by revelation or the notion that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD. Dick actually delivers one of the simplest, most elegant, and most useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before. E.G. Stratton of Stagira's Talos Principle. But it's particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Um, that's fair. I mean, even, it even applies here, honestly. Um, this is reality, by that definition, because, think about it, the uh, escape character, uh, and even some of the other ones, like Sheep, have been kind of giving up on this whole world. But if you think about it, um, it's still here. They're still in it. Uh, the program is still running by virtue of Elohim's presence. Uh, and so in that sense, reality is not believed in anymore by them. And it's not going away. All right, let's read this QR code from Sheep. We never read it. I keep trying to imagine that all this is designed for some purpose. Not just the challenges, but Elohim, the terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before our eyes, it's behind them. Ah. Well, I can tell you the purpose, I think. Um, the terminals are telling us what is actually going on, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about that as we head over to uh, Alexander Drennan's um, log here. When the scale of it all overwhelms me, this is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a... a kind of freedom. It's an interesting point, I have to say. Um, you know, as we are questioning reality itself and what it means to be a person and... Um, the persistence of civilization, which is obviously one of the major themes, certainly for the team developing um, this whole setup, the whole simulation, obviously they're thinking about that. You know, are we gone forever when we're um, when we're dead? And I would say no. I'm just going to rest here for a while. I need a moment of peace. Destiny can wait. All right. Yeah, I would say no, uh, honestly. It's not, um, it's, it's not the end, because they've just created almost an entire bloodline, if you think about it, uh, of, <coughs> of robots, well, robots is the wrong term, they're not physical, but of artificial intelligences, like, uh, the one we're playing as right now, honestly. Uh, there's so much that they've created here. Um, it's it's astounding. There are tons of uh, generations, as Elohim said, as we entered this area, uh, of people, really, just full-fledged people. And so in that sense, they've created this world for the people to exist in, and uh, really... The first of them were probably hard coded by the developers <coughs> of the simulation themselves. <coughs> Oof, excuse me. So, if you think about that, uh, honestly, it's pretty incredible because they're not dead. 
uh, humanity has survived because it um, has transcended the physical world. And in a sense, that's what um, transcendence is really all about, is uh, moving past boundaries, and that's what they've done. The precision eludes you simply continue. Success and failure are irrelevant. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must have been thinking about it without knowing it. Nevithis. Nevithis is an Egyptian goddess, if I remember correctly. I believe... I think it's the goddess of women? Um... I haven't seen that name before, though, in the game, which is much interesting. Time flies, also is what this one is called. Uh, what are we trying to do here? I need to look around. Okay, so we have a laser. That's it. We have a fan, which must be connected to that. A recorder. And we have this room. Okay. Uh, we probably won't finish this puzzle today. Sorry, guys. We spent a lot of time pondering the uh, philosophical questions, but we haven't done that in a while, so I'm glad we did. Interesting. Here's the thought. So, that, um, that connector will still be connected here if we take it while the recording is playing. <coughs> so, that means that we can connect it up to the laser, put it on the fan, yeah, 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 okay, I get it. I know how this works. <coughs> I do not know how my throat works, though. I'm sorry. I don't know how much of that you can hear. I'm actually moving my microphone away from my face to try to uh, spare you the details of my coughing fit. But I have actually been sick for um, a couple weeks, and that's why uploads on the channel have slowed. So bear with me, guys. Uh, I'm still recovering but I wanted to get you some content, so that's what we're doing. Anyway, let's see, what do we need to do? So that needs to be there while we're in the cord mode. Um, we can stand here. We can stand here as the recorded person. Um, we can then... Probably gonna be just like this for a long time. That's, that's what I think we would do. And then I think what we do next is we run over, grab the connector, run back, uh, we grab the cube, place it down, connector to laser, um, laser to input, oh shoot, doesn't hook up. Interesting, okay. So that's a problem. The, uh, the link here won't work, so we might have to spend a little bit of time on that, actually. Um, yeah, I think this is a two-step process. First, we get the connector up there. Then, we get ourselves over here. So we're going to grab this. Um, we'll worry about that part later. But first, we need the connector up there. Actually, no. No, that's wrong. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. That's not right. Hang on. Okay. This has to be here. It has to be. It has to be right there, because otherwise we can't get it back down. Unless we record ourselves with... Oh, well, that's a possibility. Unless we record ourselves with everything in place up there and then move over this way. Okay, it might work. We have, like, one minute before the usual episode runtime expires, but I'd like to beat at least one puzzle today, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I think all that really needs to happen here is while we record ourselves, uh, like so, with this hooked up, to that and place down and this stood on right here. I think that's actually hang on. No, no, no. We hop off, 
for a second, wait for us to put everything where it needs to go, and then we stand right here. Okay? I think that's right. And then we just hold it there um, for a second until we can get the rest done. Okay. That should be enough time. Good. Now. So what we need to do is take that. That. Actually, hang on. We need this. Here. Uh, wait for us to step on that. And turn the fan on. Okay. Place that there. Done. So, when we get back on, we should be good to go. What? Oh, it's because it's breaking it. Ah. That's it. Okay, there we go. That worked. Okay. And we're good. So now it's up there. That's what we want. Okay, step one complete. <coughs> so what I think happens now is uh, we just record ourselves with that in the air as is for a really long time. And then we go ahead, drop this, shut down the fan, bring the cube here, and then move the connector all the way. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna uh, record ourselves like this for about, oh, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe. And then we'll go ahead and rest. Okay, uh, we'll go to like 30 to make sure we don't screw it up, because sometimes things go wrong. And we're going to have to redo the part we just did with uh, putting the connector up in the sky. Okay, that's good. We're actually going to drop this to the ground. Wait, that fan keeps it in the air? What? Okay, we're going to take the cube. Okay, that should do it. Shoot. Uh, we have 18 seconds. Should be enough time. Yeah, should be enough time. Go, 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 go. And connect up. Place down. Sigil. Get out. Does that stay up or will the recording expire? Aw, oh, that's too bad. I wanted to read that. I did. And I hear, um, the archive beeping. I wanted to check that message out, but unfortunately, I actually didn't record myself for long enough. Uh, maybe we'll come back next episode and do it again with a little more time. But actually, for this episode certainly, we are out of all that time. So I hope you have enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. This has been me called Lennon speaking. Goodbye, friends. And I will see you all next time. Some more Talos Principle.